I am a man, and I bet that's pretty noticeable. I have this blue shirt on, and I bet that's pretty noticeable too. I have a disability, and I imagine it's less noticeable, if at all. Disability is a social construct. It means different things to different people. It can be good, it can be bad, it can be neither, and I think it's all three at once. We all have biases, we all make judgments of people. It's a natural part of being human. We all have a preconception of what disability looks like and what it sounds like. When people meet that preconception, they have a visible disability, and they can experience ableism, abuse, violence, and poverty at higher rates than the general population. When people don't meet that preconception, they can have an invisible disability. They can pass as able-bodied and get into places that visibly disabled people can't, but they can still experience ableism, discrimination in the workplace when they do disclose their disability status, and difficulty getting the support they may need without the context that a visible disability would provide. Corpus callosum disorders, or CCDs, are a microcosm of the world of disability. The corpus callosum is part of the brain. It connects the two hemispheres together for efficient communication between the two sides. We use it when we process sensory and motor data, and for complex thought processes like socializing and abstract thought processes like mathematics. When someone has a corpus callosum disorder, they have a congenital brain malformation where they're born without the corpus callosum or with only part of it. The neuroplastic changes a brain will make to accommodate for the corpus callosum not being there is often less efficient, and this can lead to intellectual disability, learning disability, mental and physical health challenges, sensory impairment, and most commonly, neurodiversities, conditions where the brain is wired differently, like autism, dyslexia, and dyscalculia. What's significant about CCDs is that it is a neurodiversity in and of itself. The brain is wired differently to accommodate for the corpus callosum not being there. It's a rare condition that only affects one in 3,000 people, so not much is known about it. And it's difficult to give an accurate prognosis because it's highly variable in cause and effect from person to person. Most of the time, a diagnosis is made during pregnancy. This is a hard enough time for parents as it is, and it's often very isolating being given this diagnosis from a medical professional that hasn't had exposure to this condition before. They often give inaccurate and out-of-date information. We can't expect doctors to know everything, so we go online where there's lots of misinformation too. Parents need to be able to make informed decisions about their pregnancy, and they need easier access to international expertise to do this. Both parents and doctors need more resources in navigating that space of an in utero diagnosis of disability. This would help with CCD, and it would help with the 1 in 22 pregnancies that experience a major congenital anomaly and we need to, need to provide care for parents no matter what decision they make about their pregnancy. And parents in the room will know having a child is just the beginning. Children with CCD often fail to get the supports they need in school, whether it's access to a mainstream school setting or additional supports in any setting, and they often face bullying for being different. We need to teach children about disability. We teach them about many facets of Australian society, why not teach them about the nearly one in five people that have a disability? We can teach them about the value of bodily difference, of thinking and learning and problem solving differently, and the value of people's inherent worth. We can change preconceptions from the start to be neutral and anti-ableist. This is perhaps the most important thing we can do, and we can do it by showing rather than telling. This might look like challenging the narratives around disability and getting rid of infantilization and overly positive and overly negative stories about disabled people, challenging the language that we use and getting rid of euphemisms and having a conversation with a child about what it might look like for them to include someone with a disability in their peer group. And this stuff kind of sucks. Like we're talking about actually doing something and not just listening to TED Talks all day. We need inclusive schooling, not exclusion or segregation or integration, but allow for full participation in mainstream settings with the additional supports to help us get there. Getting the support can be hard. We need evidence, and the evidence that we have is medical images of our brain that show a physical difference, and this is often not enough for the education, disability, and healthcare sectors. This leads to 
diagnoses of autism when we don't meet the criteria for it just so that we can have access to the resources that autistic people have. We need access to the resources that we need for the diagnoses that we actually have. During adolescence, our brain goes through lots of changes, including the corpus callosum. As socializing becomes more important and more complicated in a teenager's life, our CCD peers are often left behind. As we transition into adulthood, the pediatric services that may have been available to us often don't have an adult equivalent. This can make that transition into post-secondary education and the workplace harder than it needs to be. An inclusive workplace might look at how physical spaces are optimized for sensory concerns, and they might look at flexible working arrangements and hours and options to work from home. These are things the disability community have been asking for for a long time. And we've seen some of this stuff happen during the COVID-19 lockdown. Things we could never do until the health and well-being of able-bodied people was at stake. I found out about my CCD when I was 19. I faced many challenges like we all do in my formative years. I struggled with relationships, anxiety and depression and went on a medical journey to navigate obsessive compulsive disorder and major depressive disorder. A chance encounter with a brain scan gave me new information about what might be going on. My GP and I had never heard of the condition before, so we looked it up on Wikipedia together. I didn't find any useful information, and my GP didn't feel like it was relevant to me, but I couldn't shake this idea that there was a relationship between what was going on in my brain and what was going on in my life. And that search for more information is still going on today, and that's why I'm doing research into corpus callosum disorders here at QUT. I've been asked by doctors to advise them on my needs because of my exposure to this topic, and I know not everyone can do that for themselves, and that's why I'm working in the advocacy space as well. We can't grow brains in a lab that we could then harvest to implant into those who need it. This wouldn't really help with CCD, this imaginary future where we can do this, because it's not just about the corpus callosum, it's about the global changes the brain has made. It's not really about that either. We have deeply ingrained ideas that we can make humanity better by eliminating traits that we don't like. I would argue that we can make humanity better by being more humane. Disability is a social construct, but so is traits that we don't like. So is health and wellness and perfection. Disabled people can't wait for that future that isn't coming. They can't wait for that future that discredits their humanity and disenfranchises them, but they don't have to. All people need to live in optimal environments in order to thrive, and disabled people just need to be allowed to live in theirs. What ordinary people can do is challenge the biases they may hold about disability that sees disabled people as other and lesser, and think about inclusivity in their own spaces at school and work and broader society.